In 1953, Tenzing Norgay and Edmund Hillary conquered Mount Everest. What many Kiwis may not know is that they were part of a team of 13 attempting the climb. Now Everest Untold is a unique play that re-examines the Everest expedition of 1953 and tells the story through the eyes of the other Kiwi climber, George Lowe, and expedition leader, John Hunt. I remember the stone paved streets, the graceful houses made of red stone, the wood carved balconies higher up, the many temples, the prayer wheels. Piles the, of shit. The what? Remember the smell of the town, poo wee. They're two men that have been through a baptism of fire kind of thing and so they have that bond. Um, George Lowe was apparently a terrific bloke. He, everybody liked him and everybody liked John Hunt. He was a terrific leader of men and so within the play the dynamic is these two pretty decent guys who really like each other and have had this deep experience have come together to give a public talk, but it isn't, isn't as well rehearsed as perhaps Sir John would have liked it. Yeah. And they sort of bang into each other and end up telling some parts of the story that perhaps aren't all Watto and Tally Ho. The unique nature of this play is that it's pretending to be a boring <laughs> seminar slideshow. And it does start like that. It's pretty some, scary, the beginning. Some of the audience are going, are you kidding me? Is this what we're in for? For how, how long is this? An, an hour? But it, but it, it soon ramps up. Are we using that? Yeah. Union We're really lucky to have been involved in a project with such high caliber actors. Uh, Johnny Bruff, who's just been on screen in, um, in What We Do in the Shadows, and Stephen Lovett, who has done a number of theatre productions, also has a number of film credits and TV credits to his name. Um, yeah, I feel very privileged. Uh, there's a, not a lot of direction required. Uh, I find my role kind of sitting in the room and kind of uh, just kind of just guiding them sli slightly as to where I would like the piece to go. They've obviously got a very honed uh, ear to the piece. As an actor, I, I still, just doing a run today, I still have to just make, just don't indulge, stop indulging John, get, get the story out, because I get all choked up. And I know it's naughty as an actor to have your throat close up like that, but when you get emotional, your throat closes up. You can't, can't help yourself. Yeah. Anyway. And this, honestly, as an actor, as an audience, the last thing I want from, my, from the play that I'm watching is actors who indulge in the emotions, because I, I think it blows it. Personally, What's striking about that is you can't it. actually see it on him. I just start going... You, no, you don't. you don't. You look like this. And the first time you do it, it's like, man, this needs, this, he needs to crack it up here. I just thought you were being a bit slow and lazy, but... Well, I don't know how to work I now know I, that I need it's to actually tell him. Them, pace it up. Come on, John T, pace it up. <laughs> My name and lines, I'm being emotional. Ordinary coolies are all right lower down, but high up, you must have Sherpas. Of course, they come at a cost. When I approach the Himalayan committee... Mayfair Mafia. Yeah, well, it's true, they do have offices in a fashionable part of London. I think anybody seeing it will come out going, well, 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 well. Didn't know that. Yeah, and it isn't just told in this dry thing. There is an emotional content and an emotional journey, and there is a payoff and a denouement and all of those dramatic forms, but also there's this holy cranoli. Who knew? Yeah.